I first went to live and work in China 29 years ago during the academic year 1980-1981 I became a professor at a Chinese university as part of the program of reform and opening up where the Chinese government was looking for foreign professors to help reinforce their teaching staff. And so to a certain extent, I, I, I can say that I'm one of the teachers who trained some of the post-reform generation. Yes, and so Professor Wang represents a generation of young Chinese intellectuals who have been trained in their own tradition, both traditional and modern, and have also learned the social sciences from a Western point of view. And for too long, we in the West have been trying to analyze what's happening in China according to the way we think the world works or the way the world should work. But now we have a new generation, this post-reform generation in China, like Professor Wang Jingxu, who can analyze us from a Chinese point of view. So today, because China is getting so important, so influential in the in the world uh, picture, uh, really f from outside China, we're we're asking a very central question: Is will China politically uh, be become a democratic country? Uh, one major issue is the relationship between economic development and political and political change. Whether e economy, the growing economy. Uh, will bring political change. Uh, in this regard, in the Western society, there are basically two uh, competing, let's say, competing uh, uh, theories or hypotheses. On the one hand, people think because the economy is going so well, so well uh, the people actually support the current system, uh, support the region. Uh, the other argument is uh, the e economic development with modernization with the uh, change in society uh, people's attitudes change. People will become uh, more like our Western, uh, Western people. Our un Chinese people's understanding of rights, of freedom, of uh, liberty will develop. So they will come to demand uh, change in the government. So how do, we, you know, how do we know which theory is more correct? Really, what have changed in China in the 30 years? One is really the economic transition and with the social transition. And we're talking about two things. The, the one is the change of system from a, from a plan economy, from a, you know, the survey model to a market economy. Uh, that's, that's the change of the growth mode. And the second, what ha happened at the same time is the growth itself. So it's two things are happening at the same time. Um, in terms of the transition, uh, we all know, you know, 1978, uh, Deng Xiaoping was the leader at that time. <coughs> he introduced this reform policy. So we, we, today when we talk about China's reform, we say 78 was the, it was the t uh, watershed. Uh, before that was Maoist China. After that was Dengist China. Uh, uh, but actually from 78 to today, you can see two periods of transition. The first, uh, most in the 1980s, uh, were more gradualist, uh, incremental reform. Uh, at that time, they didn't, the government didn't reduce the state's economy, uh, but rather let the private economy grow, let the township and village enterprises grow. And that process was basically uh, stopped by the 1989 uh, Tiananmen uh, uh, incident. Uh, after Tiananmen, there was uh, you know three, four years of uh, uh, of stagnation, and then 1993, uh, a, a second round of reform started, and this time it was much more radical. Uh, some of you will know the the name of the economic reform at that time, Zhu Rongji. Uh, he he was f at the f time first uh, vice premier, then uh, premier for uh, for five years. So from 1993 to 2002, it was Zhu Rongji. Uh, who managed the radical reforms. Uh, many state firms were closed, were sold, uh, were privatized. Uh, financial system was uh, re-overhauled. Um, so that was the uh, second decade, you know, uh, 
uh, of reform was more radical, more, uh, more uh, drastic. <coughs> but China has a large trade balance, trade supplies. Uh, but if you look at regional difference, China run a surplus against EU and North America, very large surplus. But China actually run deficit against other countries, other uh, regions. It run a large deficit against Asian countries, Japan, uh, Korea, also China's, China's Taiwan uh, region. Uh, it also run deficit uh, against Middle East and Africa. What it happened is China imported import uh, resources from say from Middle East, from Africa, from South Central America, and also import uh, half-made goods, uh, components from Korea, from Japan. And then everything is uh, produced, manufactured in China, and then export to, to the EU and, and, uh, uh, and North America. The w so what I have been talking about are quite uh, well known to many of you. Uh, in this process of economic reform and economic growth, uh, there are also some very negative consequences. Uh, one is with economic growth, you have an uh, increase in inequality. Uh, social inequality in China uh, worsened in the last uh, 10 years. In the 1980s, the first period of reform, which started in the countryside, so the farmers, the rural residents' income actually rose faster but in the after 1990s, uh, rural income uh, stagnates and urban income uh, rise. So the, you have an in increase in equality between rural and urban. But at the same time, you also have rising urban poverty. Uh, so that's the issue of social inequality. I'm going to show you some photos. But at the same time, the, the, you know, uh, very fast industrialization results in um, environmental degradation, a lot of pollution. Post-1980 generation, uh, 45 of them can complete senior high school, and 20% of them can now go to college. Uh, if you put these two together, it means if you finish high school in China, you have a 60% chance of going to college. Uh, and that's uh, that's more or less equal to the American level, uh, as far as I know. So, so two thirds of uh, high school graduates can go to college. Uh, uh, in terms of using internet, uh, the post eighty generation, uh, about twenty five percent use email almost every day. Uh, another twenty five percent of them use email several times a week comparing to the older generation. Even today, many of them still haven't used, haven't touched the internet. Um, another way, you know, we, the Chinese government always say, uh, we should develop economy first. Uh, we'll have democracy later. Uh, but the, so here we ask the people to choose. Uh, between economic growth and giving people more say in their jobs and community, which one is more important? And the older people, they will think ec economy is more important. The younger people, they will, they will think economy is less important because they have been in economic growth for so many years. They actually don't care. They think e economy in China is going well anyway. We don't need to worry about it. But they worry more about people should have more, more right of expression. People should give, be, give more space uh, to, uh, to express their opinions. Uh, 